The topic of this video is finding the average rate of change of a function. One of the things that makes a line a line is that its slope is always the same. It doesn't matter what two points you pick on a line, you're always going to get the same answer for slope. This is not true, however, for curves. For example, consider this blue curve shown right here. It goes up, and then it goes down, and then it goes up again. If someone asked you, what is the slope of that curve? I hope your response would be, well, which part? Because over here, the slope appears to be positive. Here, the slope appears to be zero. Here, the slope appears to be negative. So, when someone asks, what is the slope of a curve? The best we can do is ask for an average slope or an average rate of change. And one way to find that would be to simply pick two points on the curve, draw a line through those points, and use that slope of that line to approximate the slope of the curve near those points. This brings us to the following definition. If a and b, with a not equal to b, are in the domain of a function y equals f of x, the average rate of change of f from a to b is defined as follows. Average rate of change equals delta y over delta x, which equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a, and once again we are reminded that a is not equal to b. All right, there are a number of components of this definition that I would like to discuss in more detail. The first is this statement right here, y equals f of x. Here, f of x is representative of an arbitrary algebraic expression. For example, f of x might be 3x squared plus 9, in which case the equation would be y equals 3x squared plus 9. Although it is often said in algebra that f of x is the same as y, it would be unusual to replace this f of x with y because then we would have the sentence y equals y, which, although true, isn't very helpful. So the key thing to remember about this definition is f of x is an arbitrary placeholder for some algebraic expression that will be provided in the future. Next, the Greek letter delta, which is this little triangle. In math, delta means a change in. So this is in indicating a change in y being divided by a change in x. You might be familiar with the concept of slope as rise over run. Well, if you think about it, Rise is a change in the y-coordinate, up and down. Run is a change in the x-coordinate, left and right. So average rate of change, like slope, is just a rise over a run. Now, when it comes to this part of the definition, the ones with the a's and the b's, I would like to refer you to this diagram before we discuss it. This diagram shows a blue curve, and specifically, two points that have been selected on the blue curve. The first point has an x-coordinate of a and a y-coordinate of f of a. Remember, any ordered pair can be written in function notation, wherein the y-coordinate is simply the function value of the x-coordinate. In this case, the y-coordinate is f of a, because the x-coordinate was a. You can think of this like a machine named f, where a is the input, and then the thing that comes out of the machine, the y-coordinate, is f of a. Similarly, we have a point over here with an x-coordinate of b, and therefore its y-coordinate is f of b. Now, you might recall the slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that is exactly what we see here in our average rate of change formula. It turns out the average rate of change formula and the slope formula are really the same formula. Let's look at this carefully. Let's say that the point that I'm pointing to right now is point 2, and the point that I'm pointing to over here is point 1. If we wanted to find the slope of the line that goes through those two points, we would plug into the slope formula. We want y2, which is f of b, minus y1, which is f of a, notice that's the numerator, divided by x2, which is b, 
minus x1, which is a, the denominator of our formula. So from this we learn that the average rate of change formula is simply the slope formula written in function notation. One last thing about this diagram before we move on to our theorem. The, the line that is drawn through these two points gets a special name. It's called the secant line. And there's a theorem all about the slope of that line. Let's read it. Theorem, slope of the secant line. The average rate of change of a function from a to b equals the slope of the secant line containing the two points a f of a and b f of b on its graph.